And this is Nemesis Insider. Insider? I barely know her. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh He's God. at it again. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nemesis Insider, where we talk to your favorite creators on Team Nemesis. We actually have a special treat for y'all tonight. We have a very beautiful guy right below me in this box here. His name is uh, Floppy Longboard. Floppy, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. It's good to be back. Good to be back. Yeah, happy to have you here. And, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a very special guest, Floppy. I'm really glad you're here for this because... Oh, I, I'm, I'm honored. I'm excited. And uh, uh, once I heard who the guest was today, I was like, oh. oh do do you yeah. want to introduce him? I mean, you know, I'll let you have this, have, have, have this one. Go for it. Well, I mean, this is probably like uh, one of the most influential people that I've ever had the opportunity of knowing in gaming. Uh, he's one of the co-conspirators uh, uh, of Nemesis and... Uh, uh, one of the people who takes really good care of all of us in the community. Uh, none other than Instill. Oh. Welcome to the show. Get your stakers up. Yo, let's go and chat. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Of course, we're all drinking advanced. Oh, yeah. What flavors are, are we rocking, fellas? Let, let's, let's talk about it. Yeah, James, what, what are you, it looks like you're drinking out of a taro bubble tea cup. Yeah, I got my favorite? strawberry shortcake with a little bit of ice because I'm feeling kind of frisky. Okay. What about you, Floppy? I, I, uh, um, I got this nice, uh, this nice, awesome shaker here. I'm loving the pink and turquoise. Uh, and uh, I was drinking a combination of the mm. lemonade hydrate with some of that sour cherry focus. It was pretty mm. delicious. Beautiful. What you got in still? What you got for us? Drinking strawberry daiquiri. Oh yeah, that's oh, one of my favorites so right there. Good. It is so good. That, is that retro looking cup is really cool too. <laughs> that logo. Yeah. And I, what's I, up, I, chat? I just want to let you guys know that we will be taking questions. So if y'all want to post them in chat, we'll we'll filter them through and get them to instill during the course of our discussion. But you know, let's uh let's start off with the obligatory uh. Tell us about your origins, man. Tell us about how you became the household name you are today. I wouldn't say that I'm a household name, but I do have a lot of friends. And I think that is what everything is rooted in, is um, friendship and making friends. Um, a long time ago, um, in like 2013, it was probably like 2012, I was playing DayZ, and I just, it was like, November, December 2012, and I had bought my first gaming PC. I really wanted to play DayZ. I just, I had seen the videos and how much people were having fun just in an a open world zombie game, and I really love zombies. And I was like, man, I need to get a gaming PC. Don't know how to play keyboard and mouse. No fucking idea. Only played controller my whole life on console. And um, I pretty much started playing DayZ, and like, my friend would record stuff, and you could use like certain programs to record. So I was recording stuff to my hard drive, and I, it was getting full, right? My hard drive was getting full, and um, I said, "Man, like I have like 20 gigs left on my hard drive." My friend was like, "What are you doing?" Like, there's something called Twitch, and they save all of your um, your recordings to their servers. You don't even need to use your hard drive. <laughs> and I was like, "What? How do I do this?" So he showed me how to do it. I used XSplit. I think this was even before OBS. And um, I was stream on Twitch, and it was pixelated at first, and like I didn't even have a cam, and um, and all that, and like I would stream. I think I streamed six months, and I played with a friend of mine who I knew in real life, and he said, "Dude, why don't you ever uh, respond to me when I come to your chat?" And I'm like, "What chat? What do you mean? <laughs> like, what do you mean?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'll come by your stream all the time, and I'll say what's up, but you you never like listen to me." And I'm like, uh, dude, I didn't know that. So he showed me how to pull up my chat, which I didn't know. And I, I pulled it up, and I was like, dude, I can actually talk to people on here? And, like, every now and then, someone would come by, and I'd be so into the game, I'd look over a half hour later and be like, oh, shit, what's up, so-and-so? They were long gone, you know? Like, we've all done that. And, like, I just learned over time, okay, check it a little more, check it a little more, kind of like beginner tips, right, for streamers, but... 
you really don't know, and there's so much info out there on now on YouTube, like how to be a successful streamer, do this, this, and this. But there's just a lot of stuff that people miss, like just looking over every now and then to your chat, um, thinking about chat while you're playing, thinking about, oh, would this be a good clip while you're playing? You know, those type of things. Um, instead of just playing games with friends, I think that's what kind of makes people set apart in streaming, right? Now you're bringing chat into it, like they're here with you. I always think in my mind, what if, you know, whoever's watching is here in the room with me? How would that be? It'd be a fucking crowded room, wouldn't it? <laughs> but like even five people, damn, everyone's breathing the same air, the room's hot. So um, that's the mindset I take into streaming as well. And that's kind of, when I learned about the chat, I said, dude, these people are watching me, you know, and I'm doing this thing and they're a part of it. So I need to bring them into it. So that's kind of been my mindset, like even as far as back then. Um, I've killed my channel probably three or four times, building it up in viewership. And then I'm like, I'm going to switch a game and everyone leaves. And maybe like a few people stay, which I mean, if you've streamed and you guys know about streaming, you guys know that that happens. You know what I mean? Like, I think I started with Daisy and then I was, I'm going to be a Halo pro. Fucking good luck. You know, and then I, in Halo 5, I competed, you know, I did okay. And then. It was like, all right, I'm going to switch to Paragon. And oh, I love that game. That's my favorite game ever. Like, ever. There's no better game that I've is, had. Is, is Fault still out there? It is, but I mean, okay. the remakes are cool. I love the remakes, but it's just not the same. Paragon was so polished, and they had, like, creative direction from, like, certain people within Epic that they brought in. And just the idea behind everything and everything they were doing, it was a perfect game, in my opinion. I could be getting shit on. Just absolutely demolished. And have the most fun ever. That's how I know I loved it more than any game. Because some games I'll be frustrated, like Call of Duty. I'm getting shit on, and I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. But it's not. That's not really fun. I would lose so bad in that game and still be laughing and just having a blast. So, um, Paragon definitely is my favorite game, probably of all time. Which, for those of you who don't know, Epic Games decided to turn that off and focus on Fortnite fully. Which, good for them, right? Like Fortnite did really good, but. Um, sucks and then a lot of my friends who were who were partnered on paragon or like getting close to partner on paragon back then they didn't know where to go some of them landed on uh smite at the time some of them switched to league some of them played monster hunter some of them switched to entirely different games um but it was interesting to just learn okay what do you do if your favorite game shuts down as a streamer and this is how you make maybe a full full-time income at the time i was bartending on the weekends so like my bills are paid, but I was streaming a lot. I mean, I've always pretty much tried to put in full-time hours, but just because I love it, right? Not because I have to or because I'm surviving off of it. But um, I think that over time, if you do switch a game, it's tough. You know what I mean? Some some people play a game, they build up their following, and then they decide, oh, this game's not for me. But they continue to play it because maybe that's their livelihood or maybe that's their viewership or maybe they're really close to hitting their goals as far as their numbers or Twitch partner. I know tons of people, tons of friends that, um, you know, stick with the game and really grind that game and, and, and try and be something in it and they just aren't having the most fun or it's boring to them, right? Which, in my opinion, I'm like, man, if you don't enjoy, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, it's really tough to have passion in it. And I think the passion is what really shows in your work as an artist, right? And I think content creators are artists, so... Um, yeah. But I fucking feel like I've been talking forever. You guys wanna... <laughs> you guys wanna... <laughs> yeah, you, you've done beautiful so far, man. Uh, I have to ask, though, you know, where did this whole Nemesis thing come about for you? Where where did you fit in here? Because I, I know Nemesis was like a thing a little bit beforehand, and then, you know... Yeah, well, Joseph changed. had an idea. He was... Like, he, Joseph owned Vanquish, I'm not sure if you guys know of Vanquish. Um, it's an esports org. But he owned Vanquish, and um, he sold it, I think, in 2015, 2016. And uh, I was bartending at the time, and so was he. And we had met each other uh, bartending. Um, and he would come and visit or whatever, and we just got talking about esports. And, like, I'd play Halo, and, like, I love video games and just all this stuff. And my setup was – it was okay then. I had, like, three screens, right, and, like, a TV above still, like, back then. <laughs> but, like, that's just because – I went on Reddit Battle Stations. I'm not sure if you, any of you guys are fans of Reddit Battle Stations. And I just got so many ideas from them on there. And I said, dude, like, I want a TV above my setup. And, like, 
um, I had it like that even even back in like 2014, 2015, you know, um, even though I started streaming in 2013, I think I even had three monitors. I just said, fuck it, because I wanted to do the the iFinity. I wanted to have like three monitors where I play the game on three monitors. It's like that was like what I started with. But um, as far as like Joseph goes, uh, Maz, but he, he was like, hey, like I'm starting this eSports org. You want to be a part of it? And I was like, fuck, yeah, sure. You know, like I really didn't know much. Like I'm really good with people. And so that's kind of what I brought to it initially. And then I kind of just learned as we went, you know what I mean? Um, I knew esports, I knew content creation a little bit just from my research. Um, my my uh, personality type is obsessive in the way that if I really get into something, I'm obsessed with it. I'm researching, I'm trying to figure out everything about it. Like I'm trying to be the best at it. Like I don't believe, at least in my situation, I can dive into something and not give it my full effort. Um, I have to, like, it's like, I will lose sleep. Even now, I don't get much sleep because I'm just so driven to just complete things and be the best I can be. It's like an obsession. Not for everybody. Everyone does not have that pressure they can put on themselves. I'm just really hard on myself. So I'm like, fuck, I only stream this much. All right, I'm going to do a fucking 18-hour stream to make up for that. You know, like, I'm extreme. Yeah. I'm, I'm crazy. So it's like uh, I, put, I put probably too much pressure on myself. Um, maybe not to succeed because... My vision of success has shifted. Um, before, I was like, man, success is being like Tim the Tat Man. That, you know what I mean? Like, you're all on the top. And like, fuck yeah, everyone wants that. But the realism of that hits when you're streaming and like five people are in your chat and you're like, I'm not anywhere close to Tim the Tat Man, you know? <laughs> and like, even, even though you have that dream, you never give up on that dream, but you have to set like ladder rungs to get there and without those ladder rungs to climb you're really just looking at the top ladder and empty space between so you kind of have to be realistic to get there um i did get hosted by tim the tap man oh wow um, which for twenty thousand viewers back in 2017 or 2018 it was right when apex came out and he hosted me and my chat was going crazy i could not believe it the, the clip is somewhere in my top clips on twitch and i freak out right and um, everyone always prays for a host like that, right? Like, that is like, what's, man, that's like, you made it. You didn't make it. No, people, some people stick around. There are still people from my chat that like met me from that. But, um, you know, I don't have thousands of viewers. I don't have hundreds of viewers, you know, because of that. People come, some people liked it, cool. And then they just move on. They're back to watching their favorite streamers. So I don't think a big host is what's going to get someone, you know, superstardom. Uh, good for discovery, but I think that the more that you can interact and take opportunities within the industry, whether that's with a certain game or an event or a podcast or, or um, you know, a live stream with another streamer, like any cross-pollination you can do to just, to just increase your visibility, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, always take it, always try and make friends, but do it for the right reasons. Don't say, all right, I'm going to slide in this person's DM because I want to get on their show. Or because, I mean, that can be an end goal, cool, but be, uh, be genuine, right? Like, be, like, want to actually befriend them and, and, and also think about the value that you can offer, not just that person, but your, your chat, another chat, a show, right? Like, cause I have quite a bit of knowledge only because I've, you know, ate shit and learned stuff and failed millions of times, you know, that's the only reason why I know. Uh, and so I guess I'm here to maybe, teach that or like express that right <laughs> yeah well, i mean and that's exactly what you've done at least in my experience you know you, you i i've been i've been streaming for like maybe maybe like two years and and in that span the difference in time the difference in time and 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 progression during that time from before and after you and i became really close friends and you really like Took me under your wing, so to speak. Uh, you has been completely I crazy. You? I remember the day I called you, and I, I was at a coffee shop, and I called Flavio on his phone, and we have like a two hour call. And I just tell him, All right, bro, get a pen and paper and write this down. You need to change this. You need to look at this. <laughs> this is what you need to do. You need to stop doing this. I'm looking at this vibe. You need to stop. You, you know, remember that? And I was like, Dude, and he, he was like, like do, 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 I think the more someone can be open-minded and a sponge, there's a lot of misinformation out there, guys. There's a lot of people that 
are egotistical and will tell you to do a certain thing and you'll do it and there's no success in it and you're like, well, what the fuck? Um, but if you have an open mind and you're malleable, like Bruce Lee says, be like water. Um, I think the more open-minded you are and more open to experiences and trying new things and not being like, well, I already tried that and that didn't work. Just maybe try it again or try it some, some different way. Uh, the more that you're open to things like that, I think the more opportunity comes your way. Um, because yeah. people that are set in their ways and they're like, <laughs> it's only like this. Well, you're only in this box now. Expand yeah. your box. Expand your but life. It is, it, and it's not like everything you've told me to like do or suggested to try, like I'm still continually doing. I've taken all the tools that you've given me and I found out what works for me and then I've used it yep. to progress myself forward. You know what I mean? Like like all you're doing is you're trying everything you can. Here, try this. Here, here's another tool. Do you like to use this wrench or this screwdriver? Like that's all you're doing, right? And then you give you give people the opportunity to take those things and let them work Throw for the themselves. Throw the whole kitchen sink at it. Right? You're going to find something to use. Be relentless. That's really the word here is if you're streaming and you can stream three days a week and still be relentless, you can stream one day a week and still be relentless. Um, I think a lot of people think I'm grinding. I'm grinding streaming and they're streaming like six, seven, eight hours a day, maybe even more. And they're like, I'm not getting anywhere. I got one viewer, two viewers, five viewers. I'm grinding. Why does anyone notice me? It's like a lot of those people, they're just playing games with friends for 12 hours. I mean, it's the truth. Um, some of them, maybe not, but most of them are because I watch their streams and I'm, I'm reviewing their streams and stuff. And it's like, if you would just work on, and there's someone named Gary V, you know, on Vay VaynerMedia, and I always bring him up just because he has pretty, pretty decent marketing techniques. If you look up Gary V, 86 page deck, if you Google that, um, it's something I've learned from. Pretty much, he says, is you have your main piece of content, which if you're a streamer, it'd be Twitch or YouTube or whatever your main piece of streaming content is. Stream a certain amount a week and make sure you set aside time to clip that or take content from that and make it into micro content as pillars to hold up your main part, right? Because you're going to need pillars for that. So I think the main ones right now is, of course, TikTok. I suck on TikTok. I cannot make a video. <laughs> Save my life. I have friends, bro, with two million, two million <laughs> fucking things. Um, not saying that translates to Twitch every time, right? Because you could have two million followers on TikTok and a hundred viewers on Twitch, you know. But it's just different audiences, right? But um, now that that TikTok live streaming <laughs> is a thing, you have stream keys that you can get. Um, that may change, right? It's like, hey, I'm gonna do this over here, and then we're gonna finish on my Twitch call to action. Um, but you have to have your pillars. So, for instance, for Twitch, in my opinion, I think that um, YouTube Shorts is good. Instagram Reels is good. TikTok is good. Um, believe it or not, if you can hit it on Facebook to, like, the normie audience um, with a game that maybe they play. I mean, on Facebook, it's, like, Warzone, Fortnite. Um, just the games that are, like, super popular, people will watch. Um, those could hit pretty good. And I think there's a way to share your reel also to Facebook. So don't forget about Facebook because you could get a decent following there as well. But just just the idea is, okay, where can I just fucking put myself everywhere? How can I annoy fucking everyone? <laughs> you know, like if you guys see me tweeting, I'm always tweeting. Like, and it's not like a look at me, I'm Mr. Install, I'm everywhere. It's, hey, here's value. Here's value. Here's something important. Here's what I'm doing. Here's this. And the people that are interested will react to it. Um, at least for advance, Something I look for, right, uh, which is going to be pretty good, is let's say someone has, like, 200 likes on um, a Warzone tweet. Whenever they post their Warzone clips, 200 likes, 200 likes. But, okay, they did a sponsorship with Astro and 15 likes. Ah, oh, what does that tell you? Their audience is more interested in their gameplay than any peripheral. Now, if someone's making a lot of um, and it may be different, right? Like it may, people may be interested. Oh, that's a badass clip. I like Warzone. Da, da, da. Then there's also those people that want to learn from somebody. So what if that person is known for their how-to videos? How do I get better at Warzone? How, what's the best gun class? Those people may listen to the headset recommendation more than someone that's just there to check out the clips and hang out, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because they're looking to you for advice. Um, so creators that maybe are giving advice or helping with um it, it's, it really just all boils down to value like what value are you providing your community cool clips awesome 
Does that work best when you're working with partnerships, though? It can, if you know how to sell it. But if you're always giving advice to people and they're taking your advice and they're listening, like Harris Heller, how many people go watch this guy for all yeah. sorts of reasons, streaming tips and all that and all that? If he says, man, check out these overlays, are you going to listen to him more than maybe a League of Legends guy who's just putting out clips? Hey, look at these overlays. No, because the overlay part seems like a hashtag ad thing, right? It seems like it has nothing to do with his content. He's just being paid to say this. Harris Heller, on the other hand, is always giving tips. He's always telling you that what he thinks. And then if he is paid, he'll give your thought his thoughts on it. He has actually said, man, all right, this is an okay headset. Or, you know, I mean, if you want to get it, get it. But at least he's honest, right? And I think that there are people that will shill for the hashtag ad, like, Great Shadow Legend is the best game I've ever played. Sound, but, you know, and then there are people that will actually... There were people that would actually say, um, eh, well, it's okay. If you want to download it, you can. But it just depends, right? What, how do you feel about, like, so on that same subject, how do you feel about having multiple avenues that you might use in order to get yourself out there? Right? Like, for example, I'm trying to get way better at making micro content. Like, like I'm trying to get way better at it. But at the same time, you know, I'm a working actor. And I'm also in a, in, in a rap group that performs regularly. And I use Big those Dave avenues yeah. to, like, <laughs> you know. Drop his, uh, link and James. Follow both of them. But, like, I use those avenues, you know, to try to, to, try to put all the, all the things out there. How do you feel, like, do you think that that's also effective, you know? Like, like as a rapper and an actor, I'll be like, oh, hey, also come check me out on Twitch. Like, you know, it stuff could. like that. I mean, it's all about the handshake, right? Like, gaming isn't everyone's cup of tea. So, um... You know, if you meet someone IRL and they want to come hang out in your chat, cool. Um, I would say be who you are. Be proud of it. Anything that you spend your time doing, you are a product of, right? So, for instance, right, for the past fucking, I don't know, six months, I haven't worked out at all, really, and i just been playing games. So I gained, like, 30 fucking pounds. Your body is a product of what you do. I've started to work out. I've dropped 20 pounds. But I'm fucking working out two times a day. I'm James, you have a new channel um, follower. It's not just with your body. It's with your character, with your life, um, with the things you're involved with. Anything you do, you become. It's kind of a part of your identity. So if you're an actor, if you're a streamer, if you like doing this, if you like doing arts and crafts, if you like doing art, um, I think it's important, at least for the Twitch audience, to be included in some of that. Maybe not directly on stream, but... Allow them maybe little snippets of your life. Like, hey, like, I'm going to the gym today. Here's what I'm doing. You know, that may motivate one of your followers to go to the gym. You know what I mean? Well, like, you, you make time you, you make time for the things you enjoy. You make time yeah. for the things yeah. you like. Like, a lot of people will be like, oh, I don't, I don't play games because <laughs> I just don't have time. And it's like, yeah. you can make time. <laughs> like, you totally yeah. can. You know, yeah. I sleep four to six hours a night because I really enjoy doing shit, you know? <laughs> It's tough, it's all though, because sometimes you'll get obsessed, and moderation and everything, like, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, a cheeseburger is fucking great, but not every day. You know right. what I mean? Uh, streaming 12 hours a day, burning yourself out, may not be the move. Uh, it just depends on what your goal is. If that's what you really love doing, and it doesn't cost you any energy, do it. It's what you love to do. If your goal is, I'm trying to grow, why haven't I hit partner yet? And you're streaming like six, seven hours a day, and you're wondering why, why, why? Um, cut that in half. Spend the other four hours, even though you may not want to or it's not fun to you, making micro content. Grow your other social media followings. And then learn how to use something called call to action, CTA, to funnel people into your Twitch. But you could yeah. use like smart methods like, hey guys, like, you know, um, I started this thing, da -da 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 -da. I will tell you more about it on stream. What crazy thing happened to me today? Ah, I want to know what the fuck happened to Floppy today. I have I have to go to a stream now. <laughs> right. See, like little little like clickbaity things like that and will get you. Um and, and and you have to be realistic too. Like a lot of viewers on Twitch, they're people just like us with limited time. I'm I'm personally grateful for anyone who spends their most valuable thing in the world, their time. It's the most valuable currency we have. If they're in my chat, bro, you're sitting here watching me? Why? I'm so humbled. I'm so grateful. Exactly. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it that someone would actually want to hang out with me for this long, right? I can be annoying, <laughs> but it's like, dude, like, that's the most crazy thing for me is, 
it, people think, oh, Chad is just a viewer. I need more of them. It's like, bro, like, these people are here for you. They're here to spend their time with you. Um, it's such a valuable thing. <laughs> um, and they have lives too. So to expect them to be there from start and finish on every stream, that's crazy. Some people are, though. They're that dedicated. Those people need love. The, that, that's, like, crazy to me. I'm going to spend from beginning to stream to end of the stream. You know? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that is crazy, bro. Like, and and I have so much love for even anyone who stops by, even just the thought of me. Hey, what's up and still? Just wanted to say hello. Later. Lurk. Dude, you thought of me? Yeah, what a blessing beautiful. to be thought yeah. of. So, yeah. so it's, it's just, just, I mean, a thankful mindset really kind of brings all together. Because there's the flip coin of that where people are like, well, that person was in here and they left. Oh man, you know, like where the, you know, like there's like the negative mindset. Please don't even do that. You know what I mean? Like, don't add, life, yeah. life is such a blessing. It's a blessing <laughs> to have viewers. It's a blessing to even be able to have a computer to stream. Yeah. I mean, like, imagine trying to teach a friend that knows nothing about streaming how to use OBS. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's such <laughs> a skill. That. No. That is, you know, that is such a skill. You know what I mean? It's like how do you set up scenes? How, like, like you guys are so, like, if you're a streamer, you are so skilled. You've learned so much. But we, we lose sight of the shit we've gone through to learn. Now you're just like, all right, start stream. All right, I'm in the fucking mix. It's like, dude, imagine the setup of that to a friend that has no idea. You know? Um, so it's like, just be thankful that you've gotten to this point and that, like, your skill set is, is, so, is so vast that you're even able to do it. That's yeah. kind of my mindset is, is just... That's what I built all this. Like this crazy fucking room over time. I just, all right, let me get some lights. Let me do this. You know, let me grab this. Let me, get... and it's always evolving. What you cannot see is a fucking mess on, on that side of the room. You guys never see, but you saw it. You came over and saw it. But I mean, it's like, you know, you piece it together and you Frankenstein it and um, know that um, you're never stuck in your setup. If you're like, Oh, you know, like oh, I hate my setup. Da da da. Change the camera angle. Put the camera yeah. set up up here. Put it down here. Get a tr get a small cheap tripod from Amazon. Bring it closer. Like try different things. You know what I mean? I, like, I, I changed my whole room. You yeah. did, yeah. Y your yeah. stream has, set, has changed so much over time, and you know that's just part of the continuation of it. And you know, a lot of people always want to start th with the mindset of when they come in the streaming, and I've gotten this comment so many times ad nauseum is like how do i get to where you are i bought all the lights i bought all this bells and whistles and my whole thing is just you have to do it you don't have to start with the most amazing setup that comes over time yep. this is literally thousands of dollars over years to build what i have now it's what instills done never for years it. yeah you know exactly you never recoup it and, and it doesn't even that's it in yourself. Yeah. And it really doesn't come down to to the setup at the end of the day. Like I have seen some of like some of my favorite streamers <laughs> like, like, or, what? <laughs> or, or like or like Wellen. Like I don't know if you guys yeah, know who yeah. Wellen is, you know, but like Wellen has like a camera, no lights, he's not very well lit, <laughs> but he's a fucking personality and a half just like all of us are and so it comes down to you people come here to watch you at the end yeah. of the day you hey, know like and, and and real shit real shit you could have the best personality all of the best stream stuff your stream could be immaculate and people just haven't discovered you yet yep. and that's fine continue to create content and believe in yourself and maybe one day you'll hit it like when i got hosted by tim the tap man for 20k I was not ready. I didn't even know what to do. Now, if that happened, shit, I'd be like, all right, do this. Here's the call to action here. Go to my Twitter. Please go to my social media. I want to keep in contact with you. You know what I mean? Like, it's all about it's slow mode. Slow yeah. mode. <laughs> like, actually, bro, from my front page to my trip, slow mode off. I read every fucking line. So it's like sometimes we're not prepared and sometimes we are, but who cares? Like, if the opportunity's there, you're there for it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's an opportunity. I see you guys' questions, guys. We will get to those in a few minutes. I don't want you guys to think that we're just ignoring Oh, them. no, we're not. And, uh, you know, Floppy, if you want to go ahead and check our DM group, uh, Dr. Yeah, Doom wanna, gave us a question if you want to. So here we're gonna we're gonna start with, uh, we, we actually had a question from uh, um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Doom. Uh, and he was wondering how long uh, and still have you been in the partnership industry? 
So, um, partnerships with Advanced, about a year, a little over a year, which is cool. And I randomly, randomly got hired. It was People <laughs> were tagging me in a post on Advanced. And I've been with Advanced since 2019, kind of like a little bit after they started. Um, and I totally believe in their product, like, like big time. I, just the way it works for me, the way it works for my brain, just everything. And um, people were tagging me in this post, hey, we're hiring a partnership manager. Da, da, da. I think it was out of 62 people, they chose me. And I go, <laughs> wow. I remember being in the interview. I remember <laughs> being in like the third interview, the second or third interview, and being like, how did I get this far? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what? Like, that's so cool. And like now, like, it's just such a blessing. My favorite thing is working with people. I'm able to just meet so many people. And like work with them and I love people in general. So it's literally my perfect job. Like I love it so much. Like during the day, I'm an IT administrator. So I do like IT work and stuff like that. But I'm able to do a lot of my work with advanced during the day too. Because IT work, I mean, I'll fix something and I have downtime. Fix something and I have downtime. So um, if you guys are wondering, oh, what the fuck does Insel do? Does he just hang around the house all day? No, I actually have to go to an office. I'm actually, you know, in, in, you know, I wouldn't say corporate America, but I am in, you know, the world, um, which is cool. Um, depression hits a lot of people that are home all the time because they're working from home and also trying to have their, you, the, their, 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 their time uh, from home. Um, so if you can and you're stuck at home and you're feeling sad, especially during the fall um, and winter months, please get out of the house. This is your notice. Go do something. <laughs> Even if it is just to go get groceries or whatever, it doesn't matter. Just uh, get out of the house, go for a walk. Um, just don't let your your mental be caged and like start to feel down because yeah. you're in that. Because I used to work from home and being here and working here and never leaving. It sounds like a badass thing, but sometimes it does get to you. Um, yeah. What was the fucking question? <laughs> it was uh, it was how long you've been in partnerships okay, in the partnership industry. Partnerships, I mean, working with Nemesis, like, you know, I pretty much came up with, like, um, a lot of the ideas and implementation for just content creation for Nemesis. Like, hey, how, how does this work? How do we get people in? How do we bring a team together and um, create a family atmosphere, things like that? Um, and then I brought Crunk in. I love Crunk so much. Like, how many hours, <laughs> Crunk, have we sat there? <laughs> hours till four or five in the morning on work nights working on on fucking documents and verbiage for documents and, and trainings and how to do this and how to do that and structures and website shit and just that was all no one did that for us bro Every and shower phone calls she says shower phone calls Dude, and like the hours Maz would spend fucking researching esports teams and trying to make deals and getting people to competitions and getting the merch done. Like, dude, like it all takes fucking elbow grease. You know, it's not like that shit is done. And you guys just stream, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're a part of a family and you stream. You don't see the back end fucking hard ass work that people are grinding for, right? Because we do believe in it. We believe in the family and we believe in Nemesis and kind of what we can accomplish together. And um, that's what kind of gets us excited to move it forward. But damn, fucking hours and hours, I'm telling you. Um, so I guess that's kind of where my partnership experience before Vance came. We're just working with so many influencers and like doing fun things and events. And we, we, we had a fucking, this channel you're watching right now, Nemesis GG, it was 24 hours live, seven days a week for like four months at one point. We had a time slot for what? every stream, for every day of the week. It was a 24-hour channel. It was so crazy we were able to accomplish that. That's a lot to ask. Oh, you know, yeah. It was, like 30, it was like an hour per streamer. But, like, everyone was so, like, badass. They would dedicate to it, right? Um, we eventually probably want to have, like, you know, with the shows, maybe, like, a guest spot every now and then would be cool. But, um, yeah, we had that going, which is freaking crazy. Like, how amazing <laughs> is that, you know? Um, that's kind of like, was it, Streamer House, where they have, like, like the yeah. three or four roommates that just always are streaming. Like, all right, I'm taking <laughs> over. I'm taking over. Like, that sounds like so so much fun. But, dude, having a streaming house would be so exhausting. Dude. Dude, it'd be so <laughs> exhausting. All right, I finished my six hours. I'm going to lay down. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're probably just so tired all the time, right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I do have to comment, though, you know, just kind of uh -huh. add in there that, like, 
even now with the shows we have structured, everybody's putting in so much hard work. You're doing such a beautiful job beyond Nemesis on Jester's Court. We occasionally have the trivia show with Cup of Robots. I mean, there's so many amazing things y'all just don't understand how much schedule? love goes into. If you want to, if you want to just say that right yeah. now for people that maybe don't. So the current schedule we do have set up, and uh, that would be Beyond Nemesis, which is on Monday nights, uh, about the same time as this, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. I, I go by Eastern time, so that's, I don't know about West Coast stuff, but yeah, um, we have that. Occasionally, we do have Cup of Robots doing the trivia nights where... Uh, Every now and again, we give away some Nemesis swag. So if you want to you wanna get some free stuff, you need to check in on Tuesday nights here. Same time. It's basically 6 p.m. Central across the board because we have Nemesis Insiders on Thursdays. We do have uh, Overload or Let's Play events that happen on Saturday nights occasionally. We have some great Spooky Month events coming up in October as well. A lot of spooky games. So if you like the scary stuff, we're going to have some great events planned out there. Jester's Court, who does different themes uh, every few weeks is on Sunday, 6 p.m. Central again. Amazing if you like your Dungeons & Dragons. Jester is a great host. He has a great co-host staff with him that just uh, play their parts so well. And they get into some shenanigans, you know. Uh, Hobbs in the chat, what's up, man? You're part of that, too. So there's a lot of beautiful people and beautiful stuff going on. And we all don't stop. It's not like we go live and, you know, basically say, well, we did our part. We're, we're checking out now afterwards we're talking we're coordinating things uh we're doing video editing i know almost every night this week i've done so many different video edits for previous broadcasts for our youtube which y'all need to check out by the way you need to go to nemesis esports on youtube give us a follow there check out all of our content from check previous sessions out. yeah check it out and uh, yeah, let's get on to another question because we're getting off base here a little bit. But we're, we're focusing no, on you, no, and for still. you guys, for you guys in chat, um, we'll do some advanced giveaways towards the end of this stream. That way, it makes you guys stick around. You guys can't leave. You leave just yet. You can't leave. You heard it here. You're getting some <laughs> free stuff tonight, baby. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> Oh, man. So let's go to Sensei Solo. He had a question that actually is in a, a Nemesis Insider, if you will, since we do have the, one of the, the main men here. He says, are there any plans for Nemesis to expand more to YouTube? Like maybe have a certain subset of requirements for main team if you're a YouTube guy instead of Twitch for uh, uploading videos and doing live streams on YouTube. He puts in parentheses. So me and Kronk um we've discussed this so much before um and we're talking i guess uh like live content on youtube like if you're a live streamer because i have friends that that you know i mean they're like lem nemesis alumni like let's say for instance apa my friend apa um he streams on youtube now and uh even he has asked um hey like you know w you guys have anything for you know live youtubers and i always want to say yes but it's not, like, organized at all, and it's not structured at all, right? Like, you can always be a part of the Nemesis family, right? Um, but we just don't have anyone to manage it, right? Like, Oh, uh-oh. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty here. Um, Instill was on his phone. He's working with uh, Wi-Fi right now, and it uh, looks like he's I back. Yeah, yeah, what we're I back. <laughs> all right, welcome back. I and what happened? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll we'll move here. This is a good deal. So right, well, so, you broke it. <laughs> what was the last thing you what was the last thing you heard? Uh 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 <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, there's no one to manage it. Yeah. So there's yeah, no there's one just, to like manage it. No one we just don't have the manpower, like the staff to manage like what a YouTube team within Nemesis would look like, right? Like, um, where's the value we would be providing as a team um, to Nemesis, right? Which it's there. I love YouTube. Um, I love live streaming on YouTube. It's actually probably besides Twitch, YouTube's probably the next one. You know, um, I think there's what uh, there's Facebook gaming, and then there's what Hover. Maybe? Yeah. But that's really it. So 
um, eventually we probably will have like a subset of that. And like, if you're if you're a YouTube live streamer um, and you want to be a part of Nemesis Family, just join the Discord. You know what I mean? If you're going live, post it in the live section. Um, you know, just be a part of our uh, community. And then when we're like, hey, like we're looking for YouTube live streamers, that's like when to jump in, right? So the opportunity is totally there. We just don't have the manpower to really manage that side of it, right? So it's all it's all being researched is, is what I'm learning here. Basically, it's a continual process yeah. of trying to figure out the other markets we can tap into because we do have some amazing people on TikTok who are interested in Nemesis and they've actually joined the Discord in a few weeks. And I've talked with a lot of them. They 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 want to know if there is a place for them. But you know, it's all like you said, just a part of learning where Nemesis can you know do a team option like Crunk said in chat. Uh, yeah. We also do have another question from uh, another Planet TV. She does ask uh, about the Twitch's tax system. She says, do you agree that Twitch's new tax system has made it more difficult for smaller streamers to be discovered? Um, I mean, I've done a little bit of research with that already, right? Um, you have, let, let, let's, let's talk about tags in general, hashtags in general, right? So for instance, how many of us have tweeted hashtag support small streamers in their life raise your hand <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like where did we even get that from and then think on the flip side of that how many people are searching streamers or just searching for that hashtag have you ever in your life gone to twitter's search function and typed hashtag support small streamers to look for someone to watch yeah. yeah, you know, Couple times. you could have, but the majority of people aren't. It's just a bunch of leeches, and I'm not calling everyone who's used that a leech. It's just a bunch of people that are like, I want people to watch me. Here's a hashtag that may make that happen. I'm going live, set it, forget it, throw the tweet out. Now we're playing games with friends. You know what I mean? It's a lot less professional and structured, and it's a lot more just nonchalant, right? Um, a lot of people really hold on to that hashtag because they feel and they categorize themselves as that, right? We all hold on to identities, right? So for instance, if I'm LGBTQ, I want to connect with other people that are like that. So I would use that hashtag and people do search that hashtag. Yeah. So, and even if you're an ally like I am or like, you know, anyone is or whatever it is, it's like, you can support that by having that in your hashtag, whether it's on Twitter, on Twitch, whatever. Now, will that hashtag probably be flooded? Yeah. So um, maybe research hashtags that maybe aren't as flooded. Or I've seen people going to top streamers, looking at what they've been using. And if a top streamer uses one that's maybe not as common, maybe use that one. Maybe someone will click on that and see the 12 streamers that are using that. It's just really give and take, see what works for you, um, see kind of how it's received, and see if it's actually working. Um, I think Twitch needs an entire overhaul of their entire website, but that's just my opinion. I would have it more like, you know, Xbox has a follow system where if I follow you, we're not friends, but if you follow me back, we're friends. Similar to that, like Twitch needs to have a, because they, they've done away with the friends list system, I think by now, um, they got rid of that recently, but there needs to be profiles with like a social media site added in to Twitch, but in a non weird cater to perverted people kind of way, right? Yeah. Like we don't need dick pics. We don't need people hitting on streamers. We don't need, if, if, if there's a mutual follow there, okay, you can interact. You can view someone's profile like you can now, but there needs to be back-end social media to support. Now, Twitch has tried bulletin boards or feeds or whatever, but Twitter's always been that. You know what I mean? Twitter's always been that. And we've learned from Mixer, if you put all of your marbles into one basket, what happens? It's scary. The oh, people on really Mixer is. that did not build up their Twitter or their social media lost <laughs> all of their people. Like, how would they tell them, come follow me on this, right? Like... Mixer people who were smart and they did funnel people to their social media were a little better off because then they could at least tell people, hey, I'm on YouTube. Hey, I'm on Twitch. <laughs> so um, as far as just the hashtags on 
Twitch at right now, I don't think it's super impactful. It can be, but only to the people that are searching for someone to view by that. The majority of people, they watch their favorite streamers. They meet people through raids and hosts. Um, if they find you on a website like Reddit or somewhere where you're providing value or maybe on TikTok, social media, they may be inclined to follow and show up when you go live. But um, there's a whole research that I've done into that as well. Like, how do people even find you? That's a whole <laughs> another show. That's a whole other topic, right? Um, uh, most definitely. Yeah, but uh, hashtags, eh, not, not super impactful right now. Yeah, that's the good thing. I do like that there's more of a range in what you can pick. That way you can self-identify more if that's your thing yeah. as a streamer. Totally. I, I love that because before I couldn't even put, you know, my ethnicity in there really. Now I can. And like if I'm mainly a Fallout streamer, I can do that too. And I also just wanted to comment on the, the Mixer thing because I was a Beam partner. And then when they transitioned to Mixer, I was a Mixer partner. I didn't build up that presence like you said elsewhere. So like I built from square one coming back to Twitch and thankfully I had enough people there, but yeah, it's just all that micro content is what circles back again is what it sounds like. You just got to keep your presence in other different types of uh, platforms. Yeah. And you really got, and, and a lot of streamers in chat that have done this, you know, stream, 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 be super active and then take a week off. <laughs> fucking scary isn't it because not everyone shows back up you know what i mean um relevance is such a huge thing in content creation if you're not being annoying almost just always being relevant people just move on and it's not like they hate you it's not like they don't like you it's just maybe they started watching someone else yeah you know like like do you think that your viewers are only seeing you you know no they're probably cheating on you with a few other streamers you know what i mean <laughs> So, and that's okay. That's okay. You're not you know? the only but, tab. <laughs> yeah, you're not the only tab. But that's fine. But if you understand that, um, you know the value you can provide, right? Um, people For mental health, friends have taken time off. Perfectly. You're human. Take time off. Um, you may want to interact off of stream. Hey, guys, I'm going to take a hiatus for a month. But... I'm going to be posting everything I'm doing on my Twitter, on my Instagram. It's a chance for you to grow your following of people that genuinely care about you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Time off doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be stressful. It can be, especially as a full-time <laughs> streamer, but... Um, but I don't think it should be scary though either because, because like I, I've, been, I've been consistently streaming and had my viewership uh, fluctuate. And that could, that, could, that could, you know, come from... <laughs> anything to the game that I'm playing at the time and how yeah. popular it may or may not be well, to who else in my community or in my friends list who also content creates is creating at the time because everybody I, loves to spread out that love. So it's, I don't think it should be something that that's be scary because it will always come back around. Like it always will come back yeah. around to you. How often do you guys like stream and ask your viewers, Hey, why do you watch me? I don't think, I, don't think I ever have, honestly. I don't Simple think I ever have. Because what, what if they watch you for the game you're playing? All right, it gives you insight. What if they watch you because they want to support you? Yeah. What if they watch you because of your energy? You know, um, <laughs> different reasons, different strokes for different folks, you know. Um, I always ask a big question for me. If someone new comes in every time, how'd you find me? <laughs> Dude, that's such a big question. How did you even show up on my stream? Was it the directory? Was it because I posted on Twitter? Was it because of a post I made here? Was it because someone told you? Was it because I got hosted? You know, those things help you double down on the things that work for you. You know, if, if you're doing really good posts on Twitter or TikTok, man, I came from TikTok. Fuck, I need to put more time into TikTok. It's working. <laughs> you know, but if you, if you never ask, you'll never know, you know. That's true. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, we do have a rather humorous question, but I think it can fit into a metric for you in still. Ice Tiger <laughs> actually <laughs> asks, uh, how long do you take maintaining your facial hair? And he says, jokes aside, you're a handsome guy. Thank you. Look, <laughs> so I actually, I, I was growing my beard pretty big. And then I, there's a point. It's like when your hair gets weird, right? There's a point, I think, in everyone, it, 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 it's man or woman, whatever, whether you have long hair, whether, you know, you're a man with facial hair, whatever, um, there's a point where it gets awkward, right? And my <laughs> beard was getting big, and I started to look weird, in my opinion. 
And so I said, I'm going to trim it. And then now I'm like, okay, it's decent. And then I'm like, oh shit, TwitchCon's coming up. I probably should have kept my big beard. <laughs> but it's like, whatever. I don't care. Like, you just got to, I guess, I don't care. Whatever. Do whatever. Luckily, I have a good barber. So, like, my barber, <laughs> I'll go in and I'll just say, what do you want to do? And they'll be like, all right, we're going to put two lines because no one has two lines. We're going to do this. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so, like, I'll spend a little money um, for that just because as far as mental health goes, if I feel good and I feel like I look decent, I'm going to feel better about myself, right? So, um, we're, we are all our greatest critics. Um, it, it, it is anything from I just bought a new shirt. And I feel good in this new shirt. Do things that make you feel good. Take care of yourself physically. You know what I mean? Uh, a big part to mental health is working out if you're able to. Um, even doing 20 jumping jacks, 20 sit-ups, 20 squats, 20 push-ups, whether they're modified on your knees or not, do that three times a week and watch how your mentality and like just your overall mental health inc- improves. You know, uh, go somewhere where no one is, in your garage, wherever. Th- that's a workout you can do anywhere. 20 jumping jacks, 20 push-ups, 20 squats, 20 sit-ups. Do three rounds. Game um, sports. That's what I recommend always is like if you have like I, I love going and playing basketball like go go find a local place yeah. where you can go play some team whatever sports. you can do but I mean it's nervous it's like like it's, it's nervous like for me dude if I just show up I'm gonna play basketball with random people I don't know that makes me nervous I ain't doing that Fair enough. So like everyone has their thing and if you're like kind of nervous so even going to Planet Fitness or a gym start at your house gain up a little confidence you know what I mean we are all thinking in our heads I need to lose weight before I go to the gym because I'm gonna get judged. It is farther than from the truth. When you're going to the gym, are you fucking judging people? No, you're worried about being judged. You're worried about your workout, not dying. <laughs> so think about it's mental health. Think about the way people kind of view things. It's the same yeah. thing why people watch you. You have to think outside of yourself like you're not always the main character, right? Because you may not be. We always want to think we're the main character, but there are other people in this world with other thoughts and feelings such as ourselves, and they're not here to judge you. Some may be, but fuck them, all right? Fuck them, okay? <laughs> you're, you're, you're here to be loved and love yourself, and that's where it starts, you know, loving yourself. That's all. Everybody, everybody does think very similar, too. So if you're, if you're, like, you know, worried about those things, just know you're not the only person that thinks that way, too. You know, yes, like, it's alone. like... It's like the whole, like, imagine everyone in their underwear, and then you accidentally imagine yourself in your underwear, and you're like, ah! you know, like, everybody does that, you know, you're not the only one, you know, everybody's <laughs> all in that same mindset at some point or another, you know. And if you're struggling, know that other people around you might be going through the same things. Exactly. You know? So, and it's always healthy to speak to someone. I'm huge on advocating, ther- like, therapy if you're in a real bad place. Try and get a therapist. If you can't afford a therapist, you don't have insurance, you have none of that, try and talk to a friend. You know, sometimes our family judges us. You may not, you may feel like, I can't talk to my mom. I can't talk to my brother or my sister. They're going to judge me. Um, talk to a friend, you know, um, before making any permanent decisions. Um, I always advocate, please just talk to somebody. Um, we're on the subject of mental health, so I always like to just throw that out there. I do want to want to throw in something about that too, if you'll allow me. Is that um, this team is a product of a true family. You know, I had a really tough year last year, and it was just amazing just being able to get a me- message from you or Maz, and just like out of nowhere, you guys just check on me. That that's beautiful. That that's all part of it. Check on your friends. Yes. Check on your friends. Like James said, a simple message. If you just see maybe. They've done, they said something on Twitter that's kind of weird. Check on them. It doesn't have to, you don't have to pry into their life. You don't have to ask a million questions. Hey, I hope you're doing good. I was thinking of you today. That's really all you have to do to make someone feel like I've, I've been seen. I matter. Someone saw me. You know, that, that, that alone could get someone out of a dark place. Most definitely. So we're at the hour long mark. I mean, we can keep going. Keep keep it going. Do we got any chat questions? Come on, folks. Throw something at us. This is too good of a (laughs) a show to just end right at the hour mark. Yeah, no way. (laughs) Yeah, let's let's keep it going. Um, So, you know, one thing I want to ask is like all time, 
All time in still. All time. What's your favorite game? And do you go back to it occasionally? Ant. Really? He <laughs> can't. He can't because it, it's because it's impossible. It's because it's terrible. It's terrible. Oh. Shut it down. But, but <laughs> I, look, I did play. There's a few remake, remakes out for Paragon. And What's one the of best them, one? Over Prime, I think, in my opinion. Uh, I've Fault tried Over is Prime. really good. Fault is really good. Um, I, I'm, I was a Fault partner, and then I went inactive, but that was the first one out. That's the one you can play right now on Steam anytime, Fault. Um, but, and I played uh, Predecessor. It was cool, but I think the most true to the, um, the flow of the game and the combat and getting in team fights and not being like, entirely punished if you die right away and like you're you're just like snowballed um i think it's over prime for sure and they they have a pretty uh they, they have a pretty big team team soul eve i think it's in south korea so uh, are they are they are they live right now or is fault the only one the, fault's the only one over uh over prime and predecessor um they have play tests which i miss every time they have a play test i jump on yeah, because I played Overprime with you a couple times already. Yeah, and speaking about just games in general, um, Overwatch Two is coming out soon. Oh yeah, that's the play today or soon. Um, and then what is it? The Finals is a fun game. We were talking about it before the show. The Finals looks incredible. If you guys haven't seen that, go to Steam. Make sure to request a key for that. We're not endorsed by any of these companies, but uh, just we're games that are coming out. I like to talk about those. Yeah, we're uh, gamers. We love games and. Uh, you know, Ice Tiger asked again, is there a game that you just didn't like? Like that I hated? Yeah, or or do you just feel like you didn't want to go back to after maybe one play session? Man, um, honestly, I try and block those negative thoughts and that negative energy out of my mind, honestly. <laughs> Dude, I honestly play so many damn games, and you guys know that if you guys come to my chat. Um, I'll play games, and like sometimes I'll even work with companies and play with games, and... Like I said earlier, it's like everything is in everyone's cup of tea. So, like, the game that I think is the worst and that sucks um, may be someone's favorite game. Yeah. Um, also, on social media, please, if you're an influencer, amazing to have your own opinion. But just know the more you shit on something and the more you take, like, a hard stance of opinion on something that other people may like, um, it may affect people's view of you. Which is totally fine. If you don't, if you say, I don't give a fuck what people think of me, cool. But if you have hot takes, you know, every day and it's kind of toxic, uh, you may want to reevaluate, you know, because <laughs> brands do look at that, you know, um, especially brands that you may want to work with. So if you got hot take tweets, I'm not saying dial it back, have your opinion, but just be careful on the way that you shit on brands yeah. and, uh, and game companies and <laughs> games go crazy, right? And, you know, uh, when we had Crunk on the show, I, I said it to her and I said it to the audience and I'll say it again. It's like, you know, when you're a part of Nemesis, too, you're a bigger you're, you're a part of something bigger. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, we all have our, you know, talking points. We all have our, our freedom of speech to say what we want. But, you know, you got to think about how it'll affect others, too, if you're just doing yep. it for controversy and clicks. That's. Yep. That's yep. where it can be harmful, and you know it depends on it depends on what it is, of course, because we do, like we're an organization and a team and a family. We're not going to police every tweet you put out. You should have an opinion. Your voice is valuable. It's what makes you you. But uh, delivery of some things, um, for instance, like say if like a headset company was going to reach out to us and they saw your tweet about fuck Astro, you know what I mean? <laughs> ah. You know what I mean? They may not work with us then. So it's like, <laughs> and that could have been a free headset to you, you know? So you got to really think just maybe about the way you put it out. Um, but to each their own. If that's your thing, run with it. See where it gets you, you know? Like, whatever, <laughs> wing it. Like, but there, there are consequences to that, though. You always have to think. Also, also, don't be a fucking creep to people, please. Um, I'm just seeing all of this toxicity with, um, um, there's some big streamers like Miss Kiff, XQC, there's some other dude. Um, TwitchCon's coming up. Don't be a fucking weirdo if you're going to TwitchCon. Don't be harassing women. 
Um, don't be trying to spike people's fucking drinks. Um, take advantage of people. You know, like, come on. We're supposed to be looking out weird. for each other. Um, not being, and unfortunately, there are weirdos out there. Uh, there's a saying that I like, see something, say something. If you're a friend with one of these fucking weirdos, call them the fuck out. You yeah. know what I mean? That's not good behavior. Um, and it makes Don't people enable. Bad being friends with them. Yeah, so just, just wanted to put that out there with anyone going to TwitchCon. Um, that's a public event where people are going to actually be there with people, with viewers thinking that um, a streamer owes them something outside of the stream. Um it's cool to have a relationship, like, hey, how are you doing to the streamer, and have that, but the streamer does not owe you, excuse me, owe you their time. Like, you know what I mean? I have a, I have a lot of friends streamers, and I see their tweets sometimes with viewers kind of harassing the streamer, like, why aren't you answering me back? Oh, you know, you don't like me anymore? Da, 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 da. Like, you know, it's like um, streamers deal with a lot, and um, don't put unnecessary stress on them. Not saying you can't reach out and be friendly to them, but you know when you're crossing a line, and you know when you're being a little overbearing or a creep, um just don't do that yeah there's always that line between you know when you're getting too personal and overly friendly you know mm -hmm. always find that groove find that that middle you know ground for everyone just keep it nice safe and friendly and make sure everybody has a good time that that that's just and how Twitch i live is not it. a dating site yeah it's not yeah, it is not be a not creep a and, and don't be a fucking weirdo bottom line no matter what it is whether it's twitch whether it's real life whether you're going out to a bar or you're going out on a weekend to hang out with some friends or you're going like doesn't matter just don't ever be a creep or a weirdo just be a fucking human being you know yeah. just be a human being that's why floppy turned me down for a date you know that twitch is not a dating site you just learn the hard way sometimes you gotta take yeah. an l <laughs> but yeah i got a video game question for you yeah, go right. for it. Did you expect, because we were so gung ho about this for like so long, did you expect that Mortal Online 2 was going to tank so bad? Ooh. Dude, okay, I love Ooh. Mortal Online 2. <laughs> it is just such a difficult game to keep up with, bro. Like, there was a point where I had, I had built my character up. Like, what a great fucking game. It is literally like Lord of the Rings. It's like, what you wanted maybe ESO to be. Like, it's so crazy and diverse, but it is punishing and un it is more punishing than Tarkov. I will say it. A ESO you can just like, jump into, you know? Dude, if you can't, you have to invest a lot of time and any gear you bring out into the world, um, you could potentially lose, you know, right then and there. It's, it's just a, a grindy game. And um, I feel like the game has ton of ton of support and a ton of potential. And it's still not even halfway where it needs to be, you know, because I think it's still in, like, alpha or whatever. But um, it is definitely difficult. And I feel like a lot of people, um, they got hit with, and, and I'm going to say this, this is a perfect segue. Do you guys remember back when Gears of War, Halo 3, and Modern Warfare and stuff was out? But those were the only fucking games out? Yeah. <laughs> and so we had a few other games, right? But it was really, oh, I'm playing these games. I think that not having so many options let us have these nostalgic moments in these games. So in Halo, for example, we play competitive and stuff, but then there was also, you know, Forge, and then they had all the mini game modes, like Raid, Rocket Race, <laughs> and like all these things, right? And, and that was so fun, which is why I'm excited for when Halo Infinite gets its shit together and finally comes out with Forge. The game's going to open up. Oh, it's going to be so up. many options, right? It's going to be amazing. Um, which, which the casual audience will have so much fun, and even the competitive people are looking forward to it. But now we have we are oversaturated with the game almost coming out every day. Betas, alphas, game tests, full releases, you know, like... And so, for instance, Battlefield 2042, that comes out, but guess what comes out a week later? Halo. Guess what comes out a week later? Elden Ring. Guess what comes out a week later? You know, like all these games, dude. And it's just such oversaturation. It's difficult to, um, if you're not having fun in a game, you switch games. You don't stick it out. You're not like, well, there's only fucking these options. I'm just going to keep playing it. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it's less of nostalgia for the actual game and more just, the experiences with friends now right? it's different so you yeah. can't really everyone's like i loved halo 3 and halo 2 and the experiences it's like that's all we had bro you know what i mean it's all we had 
on that on that subject though, how do you feel about about this new like formula that they have for how they release games now? How like they'll release it in an early access and then complete it over time as people get to play it? Because like for example, Grounded just came out with their full release, oh, and I, yeah. I thought it's excellent, you know. And like Project Zomboid, I've been playing that game for a couple of years now, and they've been developing that since. 2013 but you get to see the game kind of evolve and you get to be a part of that process i've heard depends people say on, that they love that the and that they hate that so you know i, I hear people go just finish the game and then release it you know and then i hear people go no i love this because i get to be a part of the process and i also get the okay. game cheaper and so i just wanted to see what you feel you know it depends on the development studio because some are cash grabs anyone who paid for mavericks and never got their money back which was like the biggest battle royale of every of all time. Um, anyone that bought into um, a really good trailer or Kickstarter or anything that just wasn't delivered, there's that side of it, which makes people hate it. But on the flip side of it, like you said, um, in my opinion, do I want to wait, watch all these videos, and then finally three years later play the game? No, get me in there right motherfucking now, baby. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna yeah, play the same way. ASAP, you know. I'm the same um, way. You know what I mean? And, and it just gives me an opportunity to play it, whether if I'm giving my opinion and, and my, my thoughts on the game or not, whether I'm a part of the development or not, I'm able to play it early, and I'm just happy for that. Um, there are games, like No Man's Sky, the release was horrendous. There oh, now it's yeah. great. Now it's a Cyberpunk, great game. Yeah, Cyberpunk, terrible release. Over time, with updates and changes, these games have become really good. So... Um, I would say that it sucks. Um, it is what it is. It's just the way it is now. I mean, there's an alpha coming out for every game. You know, it's, and, and game studios, they're not all made of money. There are so many game studios now. Um, it gives game studios an opportunity to hire more people with the money that they make in their alpha. Yeah. Right? So that's a good thing. Um, well, and, like, I feel like if you can play a game in that state, like, with its bugs or in its alpha state, and, like, if you still enjoy it in that state, then you're like, okay, this has potential. This is probably going to be a good game. I can't wait to yeah. see what they do. You know, that that's what I love is when I play a game in early access, and my, my feeling is I can't wait to see where they go from here. If yeah. you have that kind of a feeling, I feel like that's that's really good. I think we've you're all... excited for each update. Yeah. yeah. Because we've all, I, I think we've all at this point had our fun with Project Zomboid. Like every update yeah. is always an exciting thing to return back to. I love that. Um, Look at Fallout 76, James. Oh my God. It was. Release I, was not that good, but now It was not, not good. It was a hollow existence. I played it for a year straight on launch. I did in game NPCs? content. Yeah, I did in game content twice in that year. And then I dropped it for a year and a half. They came back with Wastelanders. I've been hot on it ever since because NPCs made that game whole. And now we have so many different things. We have the pit from Fallout 3 coming back. And that's been a fun experience too. That Like these games, you know, when you give them a chance, they, they definitely come back. And you just got to Make sure patient. you guys follow James. Ah, oh, shucks. Fallout 76 <laughs> a lot. If you guys are fans of that, someone wants to shout them out. Um, the... The bad part of um, just games in general is if you don't jump on a game when it's fucking hot, it may die and you may never have those experiences. And that's personally why almost fucking every game that comes out I jump on and I have my experience with my friends because three, four months from now, that game could tank. And if I jumped in on it then, it may not be the same experience when, when everyone's on it. Like, for instance... If, um, for instance, the Modern Warfare beta, I had so many friends online playing that um, the, the past two weekends, and so I was able to play with different people and have fun. Um, I mean, when Call of Duty comes out, it's not free to play, so everyone may not buy it. But a beta, if it's free, people that may not have played it could get on it. I could experience that with them. So I think that streaming and gaming... Um, is less about gaming for me and more about the experience that I have with others, whether it's just me and my chat, whether it's me friends in my chat. Uh, I do not play games off the of stream, really, ever. I just can't. I have I have friends that do, but for me, Very I can't rarely. do it. 
if I'm Very if rarely. I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be playing games, I'm gonna be live and I'm gonna be yeah. experiencing with, with with someone because that's where I, that's where I have fun really gaming. It's kind of changed for me over the years. What about timing of releases too? You know, like like Overwatch and and Battleborn came out at the same time and it destroyed oh. Battleborn. Oh yeah, and I loved yeah. that game. I thought it was a great game. I loved it know? too. But I had so much fun with it. I, it was a first person MOBA. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is crazy. It's beautiful. You know? But it was hey, but that's destroyed. A good thing sometimes. That's a good thing you know? sometimes because if you think of it as a Twitch streamer perspective, if a game hasn't blown up yet, you can get in early, build your following early, be one of the main streamers early. At least if you're in the top two rows, I always think there's some, some definite discoverability there. And um, that's why... Look at the games that are upcoming or that have a decent following, but not a lot of streamers. There are ways to look at that. And if your goal is, I want to get Twitch partner, I want to do this, insert yourself into a community like that and add value to that community, and your following will naturally grow, right? If that's your end goal, if your goal is, I want to be a Twitch streamer, you know, if you're streaming Warzone, dude, it's good luck. It's, it's tough to be discovered. Twitch's discoverability is not that good. So um, you have to put extra effort in. If you're looking for an easier way, find a game not many people are streaming, but there's decent viewership for, you know? Maybe one person is pulling in 500 to 1,000 viewers, and then there's maybe a 20 viewer streamer, a 10 viewer streamer, a one-on-one, -on -one, you know what I mean? And slide in there. Yeah. You know, the people that get off when they're watching a 1,000 viewer streamer, there's a chance they could come just view the directory and find you. There's a chance right. that they could host you. You know, uh, that's not always the case. Don't ever feel like you're entitled to hosts. Don't ever feel like you're entitled to um, support from others because we're really not. Um, you know, you could host someone over and over and over and you're hosting them because you want a host from them. But it's not a follow for follow life. It's not a lurk for lurk life. That just doesn't work. Um, if the stars align and that's why I'm always saying be visible. Always just be active. Because then people will think of you, right? Like in my chat, I'm always looking for people that are in my chat to host. They're spending a ton of time with me. Um, if I'm live and I'm going offline and they're live too, I haven't heard, hosted this person yet. And, oh, I would love to. It makes me so excited. Um, because I'm seeing these faces every day and I want to support them. Um, it's also cool to throw someone you don't know a host. Make a new friend. Um, hosts are good. And that's what YouTube's lacking right now is hosts. So I think they're working on it. That's yeah. why I like double rating with you because a lot of times you'll introduce me to someone I haven't met yet. Dude, oh, and it's yeah. great to make someone's day, you know? Like, why would oh, you yeah. this one so good? So, um, you're going to TwitchCon, right? And uh, Peaches, she actually had a question in chat where okay. she'd like your opinion on it. And she says, I've seen a few streamers who average 120 to 350 viewers post to Twitter that if you're not active in their channel or not in their Discord, etc., do not talk to them or try to be friends because they only want to see people that are in their chat. And she Dude, wants to know all of our you. opinions. There is no way, bro. There's no way that someone's serious. That's <laughs> like the chicks that go on, um, go on Twitch and they know people are going to clip this and they say, one dollar, we know you have more money than that. What, yeah. you can't afford a sub? Like, you know those chicks that do that and like, it's, it's funny to some people and some of them are like, that bitch you know what i mean so like it just depends on what side of the fence like you're really judging from i think it's just satire i think these people are trolling but um if some people are posting like that if it's funny and that's your comedy great do you think if you go up to someone at twitchcon hey i really like your stream you think they're gonna ask you in person what's your username are you not Fuck no, and if they do, they're a dick bag, and now they just lost someone who supports them. Yeah. Oh, but, bag of dicks. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And so it's like, I think that those people are trolling, but if they're serious, I don't know, that's kind of cringy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's definitely tough. I mean, I don't think I don't think that should be the the attitude at all. Of course, I'm not a controversy for clicks and views kind of guy anyway, so I don't it's, see... It's different when it's in person, though, bro, because when I go to TwitchCon, I expect me to go up to people that I recognize and them fucking have no idea who I am. And you know what I mean? And like people come up to me and like, it's difficult to put a face with the username. Right. So I'm not going to know these people, but the cool thing about TwitchCon and meeting these people is after TwitchCon, the people you've met, now you have a connection with them 
um, in a way, like, I met that person. That person is a real person. You know what I mean? Um, we met each other. Like, it's just different, right? Like, you have that camaraderie. It's kind of like, it's not like fighting, but, like, in fighting, when, like, I spar with somebody, um, I kind of have that respect to them. Like, damn, like, you know, like, we, we, we sparred each other. It's like, in life, like, I see someone in chat, like, yo, like, I fucking met you in real life. I know you now. It's not just a username. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how, that's... I like push that's how I feel just when I came when I came to visit, you know, uh uh you know, and I got to meet Maz and I met yep. Viking and I met yeah. you know, all these people yeah. and I was like, Holy shit, this is <laughs> sick, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Nick and everybody like I just I yep. met the crew, I met the family all in person and yeah, it and yeah. it just it was a completely it like it like just solidified all the relationships. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> that we had already built life. electronically, like Yep. That, and it didn't matter, like, yeah, if they followed or not. Matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, yes, we're connected online. And honestly, I spend more time with, like, people in my chat, my family, than my IRL friends. I'm here every day with everybody. So the connections we make online, those are real. Those are tangible friendships, you know? It's exactly. like a real, a real friendship. And so it's kind of like, man, like, meeting someone, like, it's fucking cool. Like, you're a real person just like me. Uh, we all bleed and cry and laugh the same. Yep. Um, it's kind of humbling, right? Is seeing someone that that uh, that you know online from a username. That's why you see like all these pros, like in Call of Duty or Halo or whatever it is. They like say, "Oh yeah, like like that's uh, that's Tyler or whatever." Like you know, people people know Ninja by Tyler. They don't call him Ninja. They call him by Tyler because they meet him in real life. They know him. You know what I mean? Um, like I call Floppy Floppy, but I also know him as RJ. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I know him in real life. So it's like. It's just a little different. It brings a little, a little more personality to it. Um, when we got to experience things in person, like you, like you're like put on this vest and sat and watched my experience, and you're like, oh, you yeah. never played VR? Come check out the VR, and you like just yeah. sat and watched me enjoy <laughs> shit. Like, yeah. like you got enjoyment out of just me coming and visiting and experiencing something in person, and there was the enjoyment. Like it's, I don't yep. know, it's just cool. And uh, Maz. <laughs> Maz actually, he fucking is always talking to me about opening or buying a house here and making it a streamer house and having one or two <laughs> rooms that would be like um, guest bedrooms where people can just come stay with us and visit. You know, we, we um, I mean, this is way later down the pipeline, I'm, I'm guessing, but um, I think it would be cool, you know, like, hey, like, you want to come visit and like you're here for a few days or a weekend or whatever. We experience stuff in town. We could drive up to Austin. You know, Austin's a huge streamer culture. Um, we're not too far from Austin. Um, there's just a lot of stuff to do. Experience VR, play games together, you know, like do IRL content. Like that is what would be really cool for Nemesis eventually. Maybe not for everybody. Um, I don't expect everyone to travel or do shit like that, but totally an option for people, right? Uh, I know Maz is always trying to get uh, people together. Like, all right, who's down for... A streamer house who wants to move to texas you know what i mean eventually that could happen dude it could it could really happen he's convincing me every day i message him <laughs> right dude he really wants you to move bro i think you're the first puzzle piece <laughs> you know well, it's it's not out of the question you know <laughs> So, um, Floppy, I know you said uh you, you gotta sadly get yourself on that old dusty trail. I do. Uh, oh, totally, dude. Totally. I mean we can end it there. Um, do we want to take any last questions? Um, do we have any any other things to wrap this up with before uh, Floppy and all of us head off? Well, what we usually do is uh, we ask people where they can find you. Um, wherever there is happiness. Oh, oh my God! I knew he was <laughs> when he had that long pause. I knew he was going to be like. All right, you can find him at twitch.tv slash instill. <laughs> look, 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 my name is instill for a reason. It really is. And um, my goal, at least as an influencer, right? Like if, if you have anyone following you, I guess you're an influencer, right? Uh, but my, my goal as an influencer is, of course, to influence people in a positive way and, um, and to bring happiness and joy to someone in their day whether it's with a quote that maybe resonated with me and I felt like I needed to share, whether that's with just a smile with um, me going live on twitch.tv slash instill um, on Twitter, 
you know, at Instill TV too, um, on Instagram at Instill TV, like any of these places that I share my life and, you know, um, my happiness with people, um, I have influence and I'm instilling, um, certain ideals, right? Like, uh, love yourself, um, take care of yourself. Um, do not pass up an opportunity to show love. You know, one of my favorite quotes is the love that we withhold is the pain that we carry. And it's so true. I mean, how many of us wish we had done something and regretted it? Um, I think I posted a quote today. It was, um, uh, the past and the future, um, are both of suffering, whether you live in the past and you wish you had done something different or whether you're anxious about the future, the only, um, real peace is actually in the present. So, um, and that's why they call it a present because it's a gift. It's such a gift is, is living life and being able to choose your destiny and choose what you do. Um, so that's and, like the long version of the Kung Fu Panda quote. No shit. Is it? I never, I've never heard of that. <laughs> they say they say in Kung Fu Panda, the the sensei, and it's silly because it's from a Disney movie, but it's totally exactly what you're talking about. Like I'm not even making a joke. He says uh, he says yesterday is history and tomorrow a mystery, but today is a gift, and that's why they call it the present. Ah, exactly, that's beautiful. There you go, yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. That's a perfect ending. And it's literally from Kung Fu Panda. I'm sure it might be from something else, but like that's where I know it from. And it's silly because it's a cartoon and it's a Disney movie, but like it's exactly what he was talking about. And it makes yep. perfect sense. It really does. Yep. <laughs> so floppy, what about you? Where can people Dreamworks, whatever. You know what I mean. Oh. It's all the same shit. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so where can they find you, Floppy? Where where can they get insight from you and just look at your face all all night long while while you're playing games? I'm floppy longboard across the board. Uh, oh, I love Twitch. that. Twitch.tv slash floppy longboard. I'm Instagram floppy longboard. Uh, SpaceMobSC.com for my rap group. My MC name is Space Ventura. You can find some more content there and uh, uh, Twitter. You know, it's all it's all it's all floppy longboard across the it. board. <laughs> Just that's how about catchy. you, James? Where can they find the beautiful James Automat? <sighs> and that beard. <laughs> yeah. the beard ah oh, thanks i'm trying to grow it out again but they can find me uh on twitch here at james autumn the james autumn on a lot of other platforms i'm rebuilding the tiktok so it's real james autumn there so definitely uh check me on all those stuff for scarcely updated content on those but you'll find me mostly on twitch and twitter so definitely check me out on both of those platforms oh, yeah yeah go follow floppy Follow James, and if you guys haven't followed me yet, go follow me. Um, I just want to say, like, anyone that chooses to spend their time with us on this podcast um, every week, very thankful for you. Um, you. I'm not sure if any of you guys believe in the law of attraction, but I'm going to end with um, there is actual scientific proof. If you guys look up uh, the rice experiment and the water experiment, uh, there's a doctor who has done experiments on just our energy and the way that we put out energy into the world and can actually change things, right? And whether you believe this or not, um, go research it yourself. Um, it starts with the feeling of gratitude, right? Every day you wake up, instead of, oh, I got to go to work, change your mindset. I'm grateful to go to work. I'm blessed to have another day. Um, a lot of people in this world haven't made it to our age. You know, be grateful for where you are. Be grateful for what you have. In streaming, we're very blessed. Even if we're behind on bills, if we're in a bad situation, if we, you know, are just eating shit. You can do everything right and eat shit. And sometimes that's life. But it's duality because I think that sometimes the bad, you know, has to be there for you to appreciate the good. Um, happiness is not something to attain. It's like the wind. It hits you. It flows through you. On to the next emotion. You just have to be... Um, be aware of it and um, and try not to hold on to it and, and be afraid when it goes away, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Law of Attraction, go 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 watch uh, the documentary, The Secret, <laughs> learn how to use it for yourself. Um, but you have the power within you to actually create the feeling of gratitude, be thankful for something, and put that into something you want. But it all comes from gratitude and being thankful. So I'm very thankful for all you guys to come to chat. 
to follow us on social media, to li even like our posts. A like goes a long way. Um, we're going to probably put this, uh, this episode on YouTube, sharing Most this definitely. to people who weren't able to see it. Um, sharing it is huge, um, wherever you want to put it. Uh, any, any kind of support. You don't always have to retweet, but likes and comments, they go a long way. So. I do. Yeah. We love you guys. Thank you we so really much, everybody. I love you. Yeah. Love you, love you. And we love Team Nemesis. I definitely want to say that we are going to go give a raid over to Dot the Savage. He's a new member to the team. But I also think we all need to go over there and wish him well on his parenthood journey as he yep, just had let, a child. Let, let's do it again. So do this it. is the perfect way to send out that raid. So if you guys can get all the emails, whatever emails you want out, we're going to go give Dot. Wait. What's up? We have a giveaway. Oh, yeah, the giveaway. Yeah, let's get that giveaway first. Instill's getting it set up. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, do, do any of us have access to Nightbot? Oh, let's see here. What are we doing for uh, Nightbot? Um, are you able to sign into it? Oh, no, I can't do it. I'm, I have editor on the, the page, but that's like all I got. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm a noob, I'm sorry. Give me a second. I did not want to forget the giveaway. We did promise a giveaway. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Alright, let's see. Um Sweet, okay. And while he's setting that up, it is an amazing product. I used it for a year and a half before I even came into the whole nemesis affiliate ship with it it's just amazing stuff and i want to say as a type 2 diabetic it does not affect my blood sugar it's really beautiful it's great I'm tasting stuff here, crunk. crunk what's the password <laughs> like message me the password on discord so that i can type it in <laughs> i don't even know the password for the account i probably have it somewhere and crunk always yells at me and still what the fuck <laughs> i think only we have access crunk well, look, if you, Krunk, Krunk, if you have access right now to the Nemesis dashboard, just go to Nightbot and then open the giveaway. And then we're going to choose three people for a starter kit. I, I forgot that? she was at a hockey game, too. So. Oh, is she? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no! Okay, Krunk, yeah, message, message me the password. Because I, <laughs> I was asking her for a raid earlier, and she's like, James, remember, I'm at the hockey game. <laughs> I'm on my phone, actually. Like, <laughs> there's a reason why i'm on my phone is because like my camera you know um is on my streaming pc but my audio is on my gaming pc so there was no way she said check our dms <laughs> she said check the dms <laughs> discord dms thank you uh got it fuck it that's a long password god <laughs> dang <laughs> did i come up with that <laughs> Okay, and it's going to take me a minute to type this crazy shit in. Yeah. We'll so, Floppy, do you have a favorite advanced flavor? Like, all time so far? I tried them all. Ooh, okay. I haven't tried them all yet, but I really do like the, um, the, the sour cherry right now. Uh, <laughs> so I also good. really like the blueberry acai or acai or however you say that word. Acai! <laughs> That's how you say it, acai. Okay. <laughs> He's thinking about it. <laughs> I, I only know that because um, I train with a lot of people from Brazil, and they speak Portuguese, and um, the the berry's actually from Brazil. Okay. Acai. I mean, who cares the way you say it? <laughs> okay. Oh, I think we lost him because our crop is all exploded now. He'll be right back in just a second, though. We're, we're getting that giveaway going. This is Nemesis Insider at its best, y'all. Like, uh, we have technical difficulties, but, you know, uh, we get to see. Oh, there, there's his face. Okay, he's, he's, he's back in the angle. Look at, look at that man. Look at that man. Also, y'all, we have some beautiful crops of, of, of floppy with a, with a kitty. Oh, no. I died, bro. Give me a second. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm turning it back on. Dude, oh my god, no wonder. It's turning back on. I'm doing my best here. <laughs> Look, we have the new install here, the handsome install. James, you have a new channel follower. <laughs> 
All right, sorry. I had I had to do the two factor text code, and I go, and I'm like, all right, <laughs> and boom. Twitch chat hates him. Find out why Instill wastes everyone's time. <laughs> yeah, two factor is a blessing, but sometimes it just uh, it d it does break up stuff. Dude, do you hear they're gonna make uh, you're gonna have to give like um a blood test to sign in to some programs. Oh, it makes sense. You're gonna have to prick your finger and put and rub it on your phone. It's it's the next natural progression is is signing the blood contracts just to get our own passwords. Yeah. So uh So floppy. How you doing the day? Uh, doing pretty good. <laughs> 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 oh no and still what so what are we giving away uh three starter kits oh right. this cup this cup this is the taro bubble tea cup it is a delicious delicious tea i have strawberry shortcake in there right now but it's a it's a fantastic cup nice little sippy straw extra fun plus it has a, a winking emote looking thing on there mmm Delicious, delicious strawberry shortcake from Advanced GG. Use code INSTILL or Nemesis at checkout to get your savings on your products. You could use Nemesis. Oh, yeah. Nemesis is a beautiful code. Okay. All right. Exclamation join. All right, folks. Exclamation point join. It's open. <clears throat> join it up. Join it up. We I have not it, Peaches. You have to show me, Peaches. All right. Look at the people flooding in for that free advanced. <laughs> yeah, please tag me. Wait. Come on, guys, join in. Exclamation right. point. Join, motherfucker. And the crops have been corrected. I am now James Autumn again. Yeah, how, how did it feel to be in still for like a few minutes? It was beautiful. I, I felt the sun radiating on me, and I felt the positivity and love. It's, it's a good feeling, man. It's a good space to be. Oh, Miss Banania's here, too. Welcome in. Base joined in. Look at all these beautiful people. They are excited for some amazing products. What's up? What's up, Banania? Is that Banania? I always read your name like 10 million times just to make sure I say it right. <laughs> She's been very patient with me on saying it. Yeah. <laughs> Banania. Banania fucking business. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys are catching us at the end of the stream, we had such good talks today. Um, it was like a TED talk, but it, it was, was more really like a... freaking dope. Like, it was a good flow <laughs> to it. I, I'd say like a Ned talk. It was like a yeah. Ned talk. Yeah. yeah. You guys can watch the VOD. I think we have VODs on. Yeah. Um, after, or you can watch it once we put it on YouTube, which would be yeah. cool. <laughs> Definitely well, check out our YouTube. Topic. Everybody join in, join in. Let's go. All right, I'm going to close it in 10 seconds. 10 second Five, closing. Eight, seven, <gasps> six, five, Do it. four, three, two, one. Time's All right, up. I'm rolling it. I'm going to roll three. We're going to oh. roll three. All right, we're going to roll three. Boom. One. Oh! One. Okay, that's one. Congratulations. Another planet one. Oh, man. No. Karma one. Oh, yeah. All right, let's do three more. Oh, three more. Let's go. Bye bye. Oh. Bye. Ivy Chaos. Oh yeah, Ivy! And Dr. Doom, okay. Doom! Uh, we did six. We did six. 
Sweet. You did. Okay, so just whisper me. Whisper, well, I guess. Yeah, whisper me. And... Yeah, but um, a lot of leans. Yeah. Congrats, guys. Congrats. You get a starter kit, an advanced starter kit. Um, so, hell yeah. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, whisper me. You legit crying? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Hell yeah. Yeah, oh, Miss yeah. Lily. Happy one. Hell yeah, guys. Okay, before the scrolls too much, please whisper me. Make Hold sure me... y'all whisper him on Twitch here. I'm gonna Get put this a rain started. Get this rain. Whisper D's. <laughs> Floppy is going to uh, to go compete in pool. Whisper. <laughs> Hardly, Hardly know her. See, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Hey, and then I love that it? floppy. It never gets old. I don't know why. But it, it just yeah, I don't old. know why it doesn't either. I'm honored too. <laughs> Dr. Doom, who am I missing? Dr. Doom, Ivy, bye bye bye, another planet, small banana, and who else? Who is. Oh, uh, it's Karma. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're pretty much going to create an account on the advanced website. Add your address because we can't send you anything without your address. And then send me your email. So if you guys are watching, I've, uh, I've whispered you. Um, make sure to go to advanced.gg. Make an account. Add your address. And then just and I, and I promise email. you it works. Yep, and I will send you a starter kit. And you yeah, want the yeah, starter yeah. kit. This advances the amazing. I think yeah, strawberry well, shortcake is a lot of them. Thank you let's so much, get, everybody. Let's lift this right up. Baby. Let's go. We're gonna this go is see Dr. Savage. Podcast. Make sure you have Longboard. Yes. This is James Autumn. We have an instill in the chat, and all you lovely people, give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. We love y'all. Wish Dr. Savage a uh, happy newborn. Much love, y'all. Take care. Newborn, Adios.